Hello, my name is Kenneth Hollins with HollinsMusic.com and thank you so much for tuning in to view this video that I have for you today. And today what I have is something that I really believe will help many, many gospel musicians. And in particular, I'm going to be showing you today how to overcome the challenge of playing in all 12 keys. Now this is a challenge that many gospel musicians have and so today what I'm going to do is sh share with you some very basic tips that if you would incorporate them and apply them to your playing I believe it will really help you to be able to play in all 12 keys okay are you ready I believe this will help you okay first thing is this when it comes to learning how to play in all 12 keys the first thing that you have to do is change the way that you think, okay? That is so important. The way that you think about playing and the way that you think about music. And so how should a person think when they want to play in all 12 keys? You should think mathematically because, see, music is mathematical. Now, this is the thing about it when it comes to math. 2 plus 2 is always 4. 4 plus 4 is always 8. 5 minus 3 is always 2. That's mathematical. So it's a consistent and a stable thing that does not change. And as it relates to music, music is also mathematical. So it will also be consistent and stable and the same thing if you are thinking mathematically. OK, let me give you an example of what I mean uh, about music being mathematical. Let's take a major scale, for example. OK, let's take the C major scale, which most of us already know, which is simply C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. OK, and I believe most of us also know that each note of the major scale has a number that goes with it that's called a scale degree or a scale number. So since this is the first note of the scale, this is going to be number one. And then as we keep going, the next note of the scale would be number two. Then we keep going three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then as we come back down or descend, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so this is what I mean when I say that music is mathematical and you have to begin to think this way if you want to easily play in all 12 keys. And so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is this, to always remember that there is no such thing as a hard key, no such thing as a hard key. There are only unfamiliar keys. OK, if you think that there are certain keys that are hard to play in nine times out of 10, you're going to avoid that key or it's just going to be something in your mind that makes you not want to play in it. So you have to remove that from your thinking. There's no such thing as a hard key. It's only unfamiliar keys. So, for example, if I learn to play. I learn to play something in the key of A flat and then I get comfortable in A flat because I play a lot in A flat, to me that feels easy. But it's not necessarily an easy key, it's just a familiar key because I spend time in the key of A flat. And so say for example, it's a song that I know um, in the key of A flat. For whatever reason, now I need to play it in the key of A. But I'm not as familiar with A. And so now, maybe I, I feel a little uh, apprehensive or a little intimidated to take that same song that I know very well in A flat and play it in the key of A. Does that make the key of A difficult? Does it make the key of A hard? No. It's just, it's just an unfamiliar key. And why is it unfamiliar? Because I don't spend as much time 
in that key as I do another. So that's the second thing. Stop avoiding keys. Don't avoid any more keys. Make yourself play in all 12 keys evenly. You know, so a great thing to do is to take something that you want to learn how to play in each key and then try to apply that. For example, with the um, example that I just used, um, I believe this was the chorus part of a More Than Anything, I Love You Jesus by Lamar Campbell. <laughs> Now say for example, I need to learn that in the key of B natural, and I'm not real comfortable with that, okay? Can I do it? Uh... Okay, let's try it in a different key. Say, for example, in the key of D natural. Okay. Now, I just used that for an example. Now, I did not pre-plan what key that I was going to demonstrate this in. As a matter of fact, I didn't even pre-plan the song. I just thought of something to play, and I played it in A flat, and then I just thought of some different keys. I could play it, really, I could play it in any 12 keys. And it's it's not because, well, he's a great musician, or he he's just gifted, or he is just blessed. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. What it really is, is I'm thinking mathematically. It's nothing any deeper than that. I'm just thinking mathematically. Let me give you an example, okay? So in the key of A flat, let me explain to you what's going on in my head. Now, I'm to the point now where I, I in a sense, kind of do it subconsciously, but I do know that I am doing it the way that I am thinking, okay? So I'm literally playing in the key of A flat, and the A flat scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So in my mind, when I play this song, I'm thinking 4 chord, or the 4th scale degree of the scale. And then the next chord, I'm thinking 6 chord. Alright, that's what's going on in my mind. All right, now what I'm thinking is a five chord with a six bass note. And then here, I'm thinking a suspended seventh chord over one. And then I'm thinking about resolving on a dominant seven, then back to the, to the four, back to the six, Okay, back to the five chord over seven, one chord, okay, this is the two chord, but I'm playing it like a, uh, I'm playing it like as if I have a raised fifth, okay, we'll get to that just a, in just a few minutes, okay, I'm thinking about this like a three chord or a one chord with a three bass note, then to the four. So literally, that's what's going on in my mind. I'm thinking mathematically, okay? So why is that so beneficial? Now, as I go to another key, I don't have to necessarily think about a lot of different notes, but I can think about the numbers of the new key that I'm in. So let's try a different key now. Let's try something that I didn't do before. And, and again, I hadn't pre-planned this, so I'll just pick one just um, off the top of my head. Uh, let's try it in the key of E, all right? 
So I know the major scale in E, so E, which is one, F sharp, two, G sharp, three, A, four, B is five, six, seven, and then to eight. So I know the major scale very well, okay? All right, so now let's see if I can do it in the key of E with the thinking of the numbers of the chords, okay? So I played, if I can remember, uh, when I was in the key of A flat, I went from the four to the six to the five major over seven to the suspended seven over one. Then I resolved it to dominant seven and then back to the four chord again. Okay, which was a major seven. So let's see if we can take that same thinking or that same information and apply it to the new key. So now we're in the key of E. So what is the four of E? Here we go. One, two, three, four. And I played a major chord or, or really uh, like a major seven chord right there. So I'm going to play an A major or A major seven right here. Uh, And then, if you remember, we went to the sixth chord. All right, so in the key of E, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be some type of C sharp chord. And I know just from playing it in the other key, it was a minor chord. So here we go, C sharp minor. This is e, uh, C sharp minor 11, the voicing that I'm using. So we went from here. Right? And then it's a little melody thing going on. All right. And then it goes to the seven chord. Or really a more accurate way to look at it is a five chord. Okay. So in the key of E, one, two, three, four, five. Five is a B. So it's going to be a B major over seven. And when I say over seven, I mean you have one chord and then with your bass note, you're playing a different uh, scale number or a different note. So we're playing the five chord with the right hand, which is B major, and then with the left hand, we're playing the seventh of the of the E major scale, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we put that together. All right, and then we keep going. All right, the next one was a uh, suspended seven over uh, one and then we resolved it to an E dominant seven or a dominant seven chord over the one and then then back to the four so this is what's going on in my mind I'm thinking mathematically now uh, this may seem complicated uh, to someone that may be watching right now you may be thinking well, that, that seems real hard. That seems real difficult. It's really not if you really get to the place where you learn all of your major scales. So now this, this brings me to our second point. The first point was uh, to change the way that you think. Think mathematically about music, okay? In order to do that, you have to, to uh, think about numbers, think about the scale degree that you're on, think mathematically and then remove the thought in, or the notion that there are hard keys. There are no hard keys, only familiar keys. So that's how you get started. Now the second step would be to learn all of your major scales, okay? I preach that all of the time as it relates to developing as a keyboardist, as an organist, you know, and, and it's just a matter of sitting down and just taking the time to do it. It's nothing hard about a major scale. And you actually may be a very, very advanced musician in terms of your playing, but maybe just having taken the time to really, really learn the major scales because maybe you don't really see the need for it or the value that's really in it. But it's so, so vitally uh, important and helpful to know your major scales. And when I say know them, I mean really know them. For example, you know, you can play them without any uh, errors, any mistakes, and then even go 
uh, as far as to the point of knowing them where you know them in your head. For example, I know the D major scale is comprised of D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Okay, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. For example, I know, I don't have to play it, I know that the E flat major scale consists of E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. Okay, I know the E major scale. I know the F scale. Okay, and see the thing that would get some musicians sometimes is they would say, well, that's no big deal. I mean, I can, I can figure out the major scale, I can do that. But can you do it without using your ear? Okay, because most of us have real good ears that play gospel music. If you play gospel music, chances are your ear is a little, uh, little bit more uh, evolved or advanced than if you are a musician where you only read sheet music. Okay, I read sheet music, but I also play by ear as well. And so when it comes to gospel music and playing by ear and learning the way that uh, many gospel musicians learn, just naturally without even trying, it really develops your ear. And so what happens is, you know, you will get to the place where you rely on that and you may say, well, I can play the D major scale. That's, that's a piece of cake. And I say, well, play the D major scale. You do this. No, no. There you go, the D major scale. Well, what I'm talking about is knowing how to play the scale whether you can hear the notes or not. So if I asked you, play for me the A major scale with the keyboard off, could you do that? Or tell me what is the sixth tone of the B major scale right now, could you tell me that? Or what is the seventh tone of the E major scale, could you tell me that? Because see, that's the way that you really need to know your major scales. Know them in your head, know them internally, even without the assistance of the keyboard. For example, all right, and, and let's see if we can do this. In the key of C major, what note is the number, D, uh, the number two? Okay, that's D, that was easy. You probably caught that one real easy. All right, what note is the number six? What's that? That's A, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're still in the key of C. What note is the number seven? B. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Most of you all probably get that completely right. Now let's look at some different keys. Let's look at the key of, of, of B natural, okay? All right, what's number five? Okay, that's F sharp. One, two, three, four, five, all right? What's number seven? That's A sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. What's four? That's E. One, two, three, four. Okay. So let's go to another key. Um, let's go to the key of A. All right. What's the fourth scale degree in the key of A? That's D. One, two, three, four. What's the seventh scale degree in the key of A? G sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the way that you need to know your major scales. Not only be able to play them in your head, but also to identify what note and number um, go together, okay? And that's how you can do it. So when you go back to now, you're playing real songs, right? Okay, that's the point of us knowing this, all right? Not just to play scales just for the sake of playing them, but we're trying to train our minds to think mathematically. See, that's, that's what we're trying to do. So now, this is the four chord. This is the sixth chord, and generally all I'm really doing at this point is I'm looking at what my bass notes are, okay? So I'm, I'm relying a lot on my bass notes in terms of what scale number I'm on. Now, there will be chords where you will have what I call slash chords or split chords that really it's a particular chord that you're playing, but the bass note is different. Okay, I call those slash chords. For example, you may have a C major chord on the top, a slash, and then a G. So I would call that C major over G, or the numbers would be 
a major chord, uh, a one major over five. Okay, that's what we would call that. And so, so we're going to take that same information and, and again, let's apply it to another key. Let's take it to the key of F. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now, four chord, six chord, five chord over seven, suspended over one, dominant seven over one, four chord, six chord, five over seven, one chord, all right, two chord, then one chord over three, to the four, okay? Let's try a different key. Let's do it in the key of F sharp. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four chord, six chord, five over seven, then suspended over one, then uh, this, this is dominant seven over one. Four chord again, six, then this is the five over seven. One chord again. All right, two chord. This is the three chord going to the, or the one chord over three going to the, okay? So I'm just de demonstrating that this will really apply to real music, okay? So learning your scales is not a waste of time. It is something that will literally empower you to where um, playing in every key will not be a challenge. You can comfortably do it, you know. Now, depending on positioning and things like that, certain keys may be a little bit more comfortable, but it won't be a thing that is hard to play. You'll be able to, to do whatever you need to do if you think this way, okay? So learn your, your major scales. That's, that's step number two. Step number three, learn your basic chords, okay? Now, when I say basic chords, what I am referring to are the major chords, minor chords, major seven, dominant seven, um, your augmented chords, your suspended chords, uh, your diminished chords, okay? So what are those? Those are your uh, basic chords. So you want to learn those and and one thing that I recommend, this is a video that we have available right now in our store, and it's called Understanding Chords. Understanding Chords. So if you don't understand, um, you know, for example, that C major, or that this is G suspended 13, or, or this is a B flat dominant seven, with a sharp 11, 13, okay? So if you don't really understand all of that, that's okay. Don't beat up on yourself. You can learn it. And really, it's not that difficult. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of uh, someone breaking it down for you and you understand it. So I, I highly recommend, it's a video that we have available now in our store that's called Understanding Chords, okay? And that is important as it relates to playing in every key. Okay? We want to eliminate any mystery, and we want to empower ourselves with understanding and empower ourselves with knowledge. And what that's going to do is going to help you break out of that little box of, I can only play in a few keys. You can play in every key. It's just a matter of applying the right information and the right knowledge. So I, I uh, highly recommend that video. Again, it's called Understanding Chords. It's available in our store hollandsmusic.com, click on the store tab, and you can go right to that video, and you can download it today. I highly recommend that, okay? So let's keep going. So learn your basic chords. Learn major, learn minor, learn major seven, learn dominant seven, learn minor seven, learn suspended four, suspended seven, learn augmented, learn diminished seven, okay? And the thing is you wanna learn those in every key. Okay, in the key of D flat, same thing, major, minor, major seven, dominant seven, um, minor seven, uh, suspended four, suspended seven, uh, C sharp, diminished seven, uh, C sharp, augmented, 
Okay, so and I could go through all 12 uh, uh, keys doing that. And, and in the video, I really showed you a, a simple way where you can really take a major chord and just by moving like one note, you can create another chord. Okay, I just give you a little, little example of that. This is C major, I believe most of us know this. By simply taking your right hand, if you're playing this in root position, and you take the root in your, in your right hand and move it down one half step, that creates a C major seven chord. Uh -huh. Okay, let's try it in a different key. Let's try it in the key of A. And we want to be able to play A major seven, but we want to be able to do it quick. We don't want to have to think about a lot of numbers. How can we do it real quick? Real simple way, take the root in the right hand and bring it down one half step. And then that makes that A major seven. Let me give you another example. Okay, let's try F major. Well, say for example, you need to play F dominant seven, and you want to play it quick, quickly. Okay, and F dominant seven consists of the numbers one, three, five, and then flat seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the root with the right hand, and we're going to bring it down two keys or one whole step, which is two keys. So we're going to do this one, two. So we're going to move from the F to the E flat. We put all that together and that creates an F dominant 7 chord. Let's try it in a different key. Let's do it in the key of D natural. We're going to start with a D uh, major chord and we're going to bring this down whole step which is two keys. So we're going to move from D to D to C natural and that makes it D dominant 7. Okay I'm just giving you that in, as an example uh, there are easy ways that you can learn all of your basic chords if you know your major chords in root position. And in this video that I recommended, learn uh, uh, understand chords rather, it shows you how to do it. So I, I highly recommend that video if you are really, really serious about learning to play in all 12 keys, okay? But let's keep going. So you want to learn all of your basic uh, major chords, okay? So this brings us to our last step. step you want to one. learn to analyze the songs that you know and then take that analysis or that understanding from analyzing the song and then apply it to different or new keys. All right. This is the fourth and the final step that I'm sharing with you today. OK, so by analysis, what I'm talking about is like what I did with I Love You Jesus. All right. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. Okay. So what I did was I know how to play that in A flat. So in order to shift it to other keys, I need to uh, analyze it. So this is the four chord, right? So in my mind, I write the first chord in this particular section of the song. Um, a four, all right? And I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for the scale number to analyze it as well as the chord quality, okay? So those two things, the scale number and the chord quality. So I know the scale number is a four. The song is in the key of A flat. So we're going to reference the A flat scale, one, two, three, four. C sharp or D flat rather, okay? So it's on the D flat, so I know my first chord is built on a four. And then now what I wanna do is um, look at what is the quality of the chord that I'm playing. And by quality, I mean, is it major? Is it minor? Is it dominant seven? Is it suspended seven? Is it some type of dominant seven chord that's altered that has a flat five or a sharp 11. So this is what we're looking for in the, the analysis, okay? And, and not to get too deep into that, but to give you a, a simple way to get started with analyzing chords is by looking at the third of the chord and the seventh of the chord. That gives you a lot of information about the quality of the chord. So let's look at this particular chord right here. All right, so my root note is on the D flat. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the D flat major chord to help me, uh, excuse me, the D flat major scale to help me analyze this chord. All right, so let's do the D flat major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so what I'm going to do is pay attention to the third and the seventh of this chord. All right. So now, one, two, three, the third is this F right here. And it is a natural third, okay? So now what does it tell me? It's a natural third, so that means it's some type of major chord. So it could be major, it could be major seven, it could be major seven, six, nine, it could be major uh, seven, add two. So, but but one, one, one great thing that I now know is that it's some type of major chord. So that rules out a lot of things. It rules out uh, minor seven, it rules out suspended, it rules out diminished, it rules out those things. It could be augmented, but, but, but um, mostly it's probably some type of major, okay? Now let's look at the seventh of this particular chord. All right, so let's do the scale again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and so the seven is C. So do we have a C in here? We actually do. Right there, okay? So that also tells me something. It tells me that it's not a minor anything. Well, the three tells me it's not minor, but the seventh also lets me know that it's not dominant. Okay, because in order to have a dominant chord or a dominant seventh chord, your seven is going to be flat. Okay, I don't want to get too technical in terms of the theory, but as you learn your basic scales and your basic chords, you're going to learn these little things. Okay, and what may seem complicated, some of you I may be thinking, whoa, this is just too deep for me. It's really not that deep. Trust me, it's really not that deep. It's just a matter of getting into it and learn, learning it. And what you will discover is that you will get to the place where all of these things will be happening in your mind on a subconscious level. You know, now when you're learning it, you got to really focus on it and pay attention. But you really can get to the place where all of those calculations are happening in your brain. And it's happening on a subconscious level. And really, consciously, you're not even really even thinking about it. And that's what you want. And, and I really believe that that's going to happen for some people that are watching me right now. If you really take the time and you make up your mind, I don't want to be stuck to playing in three or four keys. I don't want to be stuck in playing in just, uh, uh, you know, just you know, the black keys or the white keys or whatever the case may be for you. I don't want anyone to feel bad. If you don't play in all 12 keys yet, don't feel bad. Guess what? Today is a brand new day and you can make up your mind that I'm going to master this. And so I'm not going to be dependent on the transpose button. Guess what? If you use the transpose button, guess what? The transpose police are not coming to your house. <laughs> and they are not going to put you in transpose handcuffs. So I'm not here to beat up on anybody. Do whatever you need to do to get through a situation. But what I am saying is if you have a desire to where you don't want to have to use it, you don't have to. And if you use these things that I'm sharing with you, I guarantee you within a few days, you're going to start seeing some improvement. Within a few weeks, you're going to be in a whole nother place. And within a few months, You'll be to the place where, yeah, that guy was actually right. Playing in every key is not that hard at all. As a matter of fact, it's not hard. And, it, and I believe that's what you will uh, be able to say. Okay? So now let's take another song and apply what we've learned. And, um, and then it's going to be your turn after that. Okay? So let's take the song Miracle Work. It's real popular. It uh, has only a few basic chords in it. And it'll be something I think that's good for us to demonstrate, to demonstrate this, okay? So let's take it in the key of C. All right. Right now, as it 
this is in the key of C major. It's a pretty simple song in terms of the way that it's moving. So now let's look at the key of C. Now we're in the key of C playing this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now first chord is an F major chord. And that's on the four, all right? One, two, three, four, all right? So now this is the next chord which is a, a C major chord, all right, which is simply C, E, G. I'm just spreading it out and just adding some uh, color tones to it. I have the two in there, too. But this is the one chord, and so the quality is major. The, the bass note is one. And then we go to the next chord. The quality is a major chord over the five. And then it does this. All right. Now, when it comes to licks, you can do the same thing. You can analyze the notes or the numbers that you're playing. So I'm doing a one, two, three, one, and then six. All right. And then we can play a minor chord. Now, I played a minor 11 right here. Now you don't have to play a minor 11, you can just simply play minor. All right? And it's the quality is minor over the number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we start over. Four. All right, so we're starting with the four. And the quality is major. We go to the one. The chord quality is major. We go to the five, the chord quality is major, and then we do a little lick right here. One, two, three, one, six. Chord quality is minor over the six, all right? So that's pretty simple. I think we can remember that. So we started with the four, chord quality is major, one, quality is major, five, quality is major, six, quality is minor, we play the little lick and then go to the six. So we have four major, one major, five major. Play the lick, one, two, three, one. Go to the chord, which is minor over six. So now that's what I'm thinking. Now, that was a lot to think about or to say out loud, you know, but you'll get to the place where all of that happens like that in your head, okay? So let's see if I can apply the same thing to some different keys. Let's let's try a key that I hadn't played in today. Um, let's try the key of B flat. All right. So the B flat major scale would be this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. So we're going to apply what we've just learned. So we figured out that we want a four, which is E flat in the key of B flat, and we want the major quality, then one, with a major quality, then five, one, two, three, four, five, which is F major, and then we do a little lick, remember, one, two, three, one, then the minor chord, one, two, three, one, and then we go to the six. So I know that. So. Once and then too, this once you figure out the uh, the actual numbers in your head and the quality of the chords, you can start to now embellish them. Keep going, okay? So, and it's and I can apply this to another uh, key if I want to. Let's try it in the key of E major. You know, and 
I can keep going. So what I'm trying to do is show you that this will actually help you in real life. And that's what I want to do. Help you as a musician in real situations. OK, so again, number one, first thing you have to do. Change the way you think. There's no such thing as a hard key. OK, it's no such thing as a difficult key. There are only unfamiliar keys that watch this. Guess what? It's time for us to get familiar in now. All right. And then think mathematically. Think like a mathematician as it relates to your playing. That's the first thing. Second thing, learn your major skills. And when I say learn them, really learn them knowing the numbers that go to each note of the scale. Number three, learn your basic chords, major, minor, uh, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, augmented, suspended, diminished. Learn those and be able to play them in each key. And then finally, take songs that you know, that you know well, analyze them, figure out, okay, so what a number is this particular chord in the scale? And then what is the quality of the chord? Figure that out. Take a section of the song. Figure those things out. If you need to, write them down. It's okay to do that because you'll get to the place where eventually you won't have to. But it's okay. Take your time. It may be a slow process for you. You may say, man, I can't go that fast. Take your time. Go as slow as you need to. And before you know it, you'll be doing this in your mind and, and, and not even thinking about it. And you will get to the place. I heard a musician say at the church, um, um, you know, where I minister at, I heard a musician say one of the singers wanted to change the key of the song because she felt like it was too high for her. And I heard the musician say, he said, we can do whatever key you want. It doesn't matter to me. And he really meant that. He wasn't trying to be uh, arrogant or boastful or anything. It really did matter to him because he was comfortable in each one of them. And why? Because of thinking like this. OK, that's what I want for you. And I know that you can do it. And so just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, you can accomplish this if you apply these things that I've shared with you today. And then again, I want to encourage you to pick up that video, which is entitled again, Understanding Chords. Simply go to hollandsmusic.com, click on the store tab, and then you can uh, download that video today. And I really, really believe that it is going to help you. OK. All right. We have several different videos of all different kinds, organ and piano. If you want to take your playing to a new level, if you want to really equip yourself, empower yourself as a gospel musician. So you can play for your church so you can play for a ministry or if you just love gospel music and you want to incorporate that sound into your playing. I, I, I have so many different uh, videos that are available that I really believe will benefit you and help you in what it is that you're trying to do. So again, go to hollandsmusic.com and go to the store tab. You can look at all of the videos and you can download them today. OK, thank you so much. This was this was a long video, but I, I hope it helped. I hope it helped somebody and I hope it really I hope it really helped you to really think about your playing in a different way. And, uh, and make a difference in your playing, okay? Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and uh, comment, you know, on this channel and share if you would. I, I really believe it will benefit people that see it. And so remember, HMPI, we're serving gospel musicians all over the world.